to Bunza Yard and today we are painting uh, figures now this is one of the first figures that I've painted so uh, today's video um, is here for a few reasons one is that a few people on Instagram have asked to see um, sort of my way of painting figures whether it's uh, right or wrong um, secondly it's a good reference point for me so in a year's time I can come back and have a, have a look and uh, through the video and then I can see what I've been up to and how things may have changed or not um, but mainly um, the way I like to learn anything to, to get it sort of into my head is that if I um, either write it in a blog or in this way narrate it as a video take my time to sort of um, to paint the figure and uh, go through the steps logically then um, it kind of goes in and I retain that information uh, more readily so that's the main uh, that's the main reason it's all very selfish it's all for me all about me um, but anyway uh, let's get on with this figure and um, yeah hope you enjoy so today's figure is um, this um, British Rail Guard from a company called Model U um, I, think, I assume it's called Model U, not Model U. Model U. It's a model with the letter U after it. Because they scan people. So I make, they make models of U. I guess that's why it's called Model, model U. Um, but if I say Model U, then you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, uh, I'm talking nonsense now. So the reason for using this particular figure today, or the intention was, is that you can see uh, as this is molded from, i uh, printed from 3D resin, it's on uh, the supports. Now the... Uh, the support's very fine and you can cut them away um, but you can see his feet uh, are on tiny support so he's kind of elevated above that little base section and the idea was to leave him on there and clip away all the other supports and just leave the, uh, the supports underneath his feet and then I can glue the base to uh, something and hold it um, but unfortunately as I, as I was clipping away a little bit heavy handed and uh, I've now knocked all the supports off so just down to his bare feet but it's not uh, not really a problem. We can get around that. Um, now this particular figure doesn't need much cleaning. The uh, or the model the U uh, figures are really really clean. Um, maybe just a touch here and there, but really yeah, nothing to worry about. So uh, the only clean I'm going to do on this one is just to uh, just to sand his feet back, just to make him flat, and then uh, he'll stick to whatever we choose to to stick him to. And in this case, we're going to use uh, just a piece of black tack. I've used double-sided tape before, and we can use this um, uh, this old uh, tin of enamel from uh, whoever it's from. Anyway, so stick them on there, black tack, and then we are kind of ready to go, really. So as long as it's nice and uh, and firm, um, we can get painted. So the thing with uh, figures at, at this scale is that uh, one thing they are um, kind of lacking once you once you give them a, a paint is any sort of shadow detail because the, the detail is so fine uh, the shadows cast by your light source is going to be um, sort of minimal and that's, that's what gives them the toy effect and it takes away some of that realism that we're after. So we're going to add some of that in and the first thing we're going to do is give this a coat of black um, and we're going to coat it all over and uh, this creates kind of the shadow um, base as it were. So I just make sure it gets a good cover of that and then we'll uh, wait for that to fully dry. This is Vallejo uh, Black Surface Primer. You could use um, any, any one that you like, uh, probably on tank of this scale. I'd stick with airbrush um, primers rather than like a spray can because it's a bit finer. Now the next part we need to do is to add our uh, sort of uh, faux uh, highlights. So if we give it a uh, coat of white, um, I'll just spray it from the top, which is kind of where we want our light source to come from. Um, and you can see it just leaves the the shadow details you can see all the details start to appear you've got the high contrast between the whites of where the highlights will be and the blacks where we hope the shadows will end up 
and um, that will hopefully give us um, or help us with the, the shading effect and the, you know the, the shadow detail that's the plan anyway obviously if your chap is standing in the um, you know in a doorway for instance he might be lit from behind you may want to um, do the whites mainly from behind to add that direction of light but anyway we're going to add some color now let's get going uh, with some interest so the first color is going to be our orange for the high vis and we're using Vallejo um, bright orange and that's um, just a normal uh, acrylic thinners and we're going to mix this down really really thinly I'm not sure the ratio it's probably you know six to one seven to one even more perhaps um, but these are filters these are not washes so we want it to be really thin and see-through the idea is that we're going to paint it on and it will allow the highlights of the white and the uh, shadows of the black to sort of show through so you need to do um, really thin layers quite um, so not too wet don't overload your brush otherwise you'll, you'll get um, some other problems because that then becomes a wash rather than a filter and that's not the effect we're after uh, so uh, the difference being that um, with a wash it will go into the nooks and crannies see under his uh, under his arm under his sleeve it will start to puddle up there and then you'll get the lots of color in the place where there should be shadows and that's not what we're after anyway this is uh, the second coat and again not too uh, too wet but you can see the color starting to appear through now after just a couple of layers uh, light colors are going to take a few uh, a few more um, passes so this coat actually I think I did five in the end um, probably could have stopped at four but uh, five looked right but if you do too much you'll end up just just covering it all in one color and then you'll obscure the highlights and the shadows um, so you might as well just paint it you know straight off with normal consistency uh, paint if you're going to do it that way so just take your time until um, until you've you've got enough color and you can still see some of that uh, lovely detail showing through so this is uh, layer number three I think we're getting pretty close now but it did uh, after this I had one full layer and then just a little bit extra on the back where it's quite dark just to uh, just to line up just a little bit now this may seem you know quite like a, a long process but this is mixed with thinner so it really doesn't take that long to dry if you want to full dry it with a hair air dryer or a, uh, or a heater um, you can but it really just takes a few minutes just pop off and do something else make a cup of tea uh, and come back and uh, and it's ready to go now to help with the highlights um, we're just going to give this um, just a little helping hand with a, with a lighter shade so we've got the same orange in there and that's um, just an off-white uh, you can choose whatever color you think would be a good contrast but generally speaking if you add white or a, um, a tan color to it it'll work again mix it very um, mix it down a little bit and not too much on your brush and we're just going over the sort of the raised areas it's kind of like dry brushing to a degree but um, uh, with dry brushing you, you just sort of randomly go over the whole um, the whole model but with this one we are just targeting those uh, those details those raised areas the creases in the coats and so on that have caught the um, caught the, the light the sunlight now we're using white with um, with the orange it's probably a little bit lighter than I would have liked in uh, in hindsight um, but it shows the effect it shows what we're uh, what we're after here um, but you may want to choose different uh, like I said different mixture or uh, even yellow we're going to try yellow uh, just to add a bit of variation in a moment and 
and for the uh, just while I'm there and I've got the uh, the off-white I'm just going to paint in Terry's shirt uh, he, Terry lives alone so his, uh, his shirt would have been very slightly off-white anyway and we're going to paint his face in white just to give us a good base to start from it's easier uh, on white than it is painting from uh, from black and there's the uh, there's the yellow, just to uh, just to give it a go. And the rest of the figure we're we're painting in a similar fashion to uh, to the way we've done his jacket. I uh, won't show all the steps uh, in so much detail because because it's the same. Um, you know everything is going to be very very similar, just a different colour. So we mixed up a grey blue for his suit. Uh, that's kind of what's in my memory. I'm not sure what colour they used to to wear, um, but anyway. And uh, the grey will just take um, just one, maybe one or two uh, two passes at the most. Um, it covers um, quite well, and we can still see the the uh, the highlights from uh, underneath. His hat will be the same colour, or his cap. So we'll just paint in the cap. And then we need to do the same with the highlights as before. Just mix a little bit of white into that. Now I know that some um, railway modelers don't like this sort of uh, this highlight approach. Um, it's very sort of war game, uh, Warhammer sort of style. Um, uh, the, these figures are going to be seen from a distance. You're not going to examine these close up. They kind of need, I think, a bit of help in hand with the detail uh, with the shadows and the highlights so um, I don't see any real problem with that that's my personal opinion at the moment it may change in some point in the future but for now uh, we're just going to put uh, a little dot on there just to indicate the insignia that would have been on uh, his hat um, I've got a fine enough brush to paint in the British Rail um, lo logo up there uh, painting his flag, uh, I know it's the wrong colour probably, I'm sure it would have been coloured but I'm not sure what colour it is, so white it's going to be. And then onto the flesh, now this is just uh, flat flesh from Vallejo. And we'll give this a couple of, uh, couple of goes. Um, now faces are always a bit of a a bit of a nightmare really because uh, this is it's just where you can go so wrong and, and just make it look absolutely hideous um, so I think in future I'll just paint everyone wearing masks and gloves but uh, anyway for this one we'll carry on with the flesh um, probably just give the hands just the one coat and then that will show the uh, the detail in the fingers a little bit hopefully On the uh, shoes, we're going to paint in um, black. Uh, it's just again thin down again, and um, this again will just be maybe one or two coats. And yeah, if you want, you can always paint the toes grey or a different shade of grey or brown or something like that to indicate somewhere. And then onto his face. Now we need to add some detail into his face just to give it a little help in hand. And this is a thing called Shayla from um, from uh, some or other. I can't remember who makes them now. And uh, they're very, very, very thin. And we're just going to dot them in just really gently. And it just washes in and creates. Um, you can see the eyes in a minute when it popped into focus. There we go. Just see the detail just enough. That's kind of all we need. I don't want to go too mad and paint his lips and uh, things like that. Uh, again, this is going to be seen from a distance. So, um, you know, we're looking at it on the screen. If you've got a 50-inch monitor that you're watching this on TV, for instance, this thing is going to be absolutely huge. Don't forget, it's only an inch or so high. So, um, from a distance, it will look... Um, better probably than it does on the screen anyway that's my first attempt and uh, hope that was useful
and we'll see you next time on Banter's Yard.